and number one is my favorite tax credit and the one I aim to take every single year and it is known as the Savers Credit. It is formerly known as the Retirement Savers Credit but it has since then reduced uh, the name to be a little more simpler and just be the Savers Credit. And the Savers Credit was designed as an incentive for Americans to save for their own retirement. So we all know today that saving for retirement is a big issue uh, because a lot of people are reaching that age and they have pretty much little to nothing saved. Uh, and really it's uh, kind of a disaster because what happens is a lot of elderly people end up living in poverty because they're living off of Social Security only, which Social, Social Security was designed as just to be supplemental to income. It is designed to replace like no more than 40% of your income. Uh, but what's happening is people have very little savings of their own and now they're completely relying on that Social Security income. And so a lot of people are just, a lot of uh, older folk are living in poverty. Uh, they're just having it really difficult than when they were able to work because they didn't have enough savings um, for whatever reason. Uh, but so the Retirement Savers Credit was designed uh, as an incentive for us to save because not only are we able to save money on taxes uh, by contributing to retirement accounts and getting a deduction for it, but now there is this uh, tax credit, which tax credits are even more powerful than tax deductions. This tax credit uh, can pretty much eliminate dollar for dollar the amount of tax bill that we have. There's a few main requirements for the savers uh, credit. And the first one is you have to be over age of 18 uh, or at least 18 years old. Uh, the second is you can't be a full-time student. And that's because there's other tax credits that are more beneficial for full-time students. You also can't be a dependent on someone else's tax return. So you have to be uh, filing your taxes individually, head of household, or married filing jointly. You can't be claimed on someone else's. And then the whole point of this is you have to have contributed to a qualified retirement account. Now there are many different kinds of qualified retirement accounts and they have all different little names and numbers in them. Uh, the most common that you probably know and that I know uh, is the individual retirement account. So the traditional or the Roth will both qualify for this as well as a 401k which is usually the employer sponsored uh, retirement plan. Uh, they also have like 457b and 403b. They also have the 401k equivalents for federal employees uh, like the thrift savings plan uh, and many others that are available for like uh, local employees, state employees, uh, teachers and things like that. So most of the other uh, qualified retirement accounts uh, that mimic a 401k are going to be eligible. If you contributed to one of those accounts uh, and your income is within a certain range, then you can qualify for this tax credit. So the tax credit has three different levels really. And the three levels are 50% of your contribution, 20% of your contribution, and a 10% of your contribution. And the lower your income is, uh, the more percentage of your contribution is qualified. And the tax credit maxes out at $2,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a chart for you so that you can get a good visual of it. And I took this chart straight from the IRS website. So looking at this chart, uh, we can see for the 2019 savers credit, you can see on the very far left, the 50, 20, and 10% of what I was talking about. And then they have uh, married filing jointly, head of household, and other filers such as single. Uh, so let's talk about married filing jointly since that's what I am. So we can see that if your adjusted gross income is not more than 38,500, then 50% of your retirement contributions are eligible for the credit up to the maximum amount. And then you can see the ranges uh, below it and then once you get above 64,000 married filing jointly, then you're pretty much not eligible for that savers credit. And just keep in mind that that is adjusted gross income and not just income. Uh, so not gross income, not net income, but adjusted gross income. All right, so that was the retirement savers credit. And if you are saving for retirement, uh, if you're involved in your personal finances, then you should probably really take advantage of that tax credit because it's really excellent, uh, especially if you're in that median to lower income range. The next one that I want to talk about uh, is really important if you have children and that is the child tax credit. So the child tax credit gives you up to $2,000 per qualifying child. Now there's a lot of requirements that go into a qualifying child, uh, but one of the main one is that they have to be younger than 17 and have to be uh, year dependent. 
uh, there's a lot more that you can talk to your tax professional about what qualifies as a child. But up to $2,000 per child, and of course it's going to depend on what your income is and how much it gets phased out. So this uh, tax credit has been around for a while, but it was actually recently doubled to $2,000. It used to be only $1,000. So the child tax credit is technically not refundable, but at the same time, it really is. And the refundable part is actually called the ACTC, the Additional Child Tax Credit. And that ACTC, it's hard to remember that, uh, is up to $1,400. And there's a few more requirements on whether you're gonna be eligible for the refund or not, uh, but basically if your tax liability gets reduced to zero and you would technically be owed money to be refunded, um, there are some requirements that you can, might be able to meet to get partially refunded for that child tax credit. Another really important thing to note about this uh, child tax credit is that you actually do have to have some earned income. So your earned income for the year has to be at least $2,500. Now that's pretty low, uh, but there is probably a good reason for that. Uh, you do actually have to have some earned income, whether that be you or your spouse, uh, if you are married. There does have to be some earned income in there in order to claim this child tax credit. All right, number three that you might qualify for is known as the American Opportunity Tax Credit, or the AOTC. And the AOTC is uh, the most powerful uh, education credit that we have right now. And it is good for the first four years of college. And the AOTC is uh, worth up to $2,500 per student. Uh, and it is actually refundable partially. Uh, it is refundable up to $1,000 or 40% of the tax credit that you qualify for. So the $2,500 is the maximum amount. 40% of that would be $1,000. Uh, so you'll, you can qualify for up to $1,000 uh, refundable uh, by utilizing this tax credit. The way it works is that it's based on uh, percentages of the amount of education expenses you have. So the first $2,000 of education expenses are 100% eligible. And then the next $2,000 is 25%, and that makes up that extra $500. So if you have $4,000 uh, minimum in out-of-pocket education expenses, then you'll qualify for the max $2,500. Granted, you meet the income levels and all that. Like I mentioned earlier, there's always a bunch of different strict requirements that you have to meet. So it's not just black and white. It's not just everyone qualifies for the $2,500 if they spend $4,000. It doesn't work that way. There's income limits, there's phase outs and things like that. So it is a little bit more complicated, just like everything in the tax system is. But the AOTC is definitely something worth looking into. If you have a child, that is attending their first four years of college, or if yourself, or yourself, if you are going to be attending the first four year of college, and you're going to be uh, filing uh, independently of your parents. Number four is also an education uh, tax credit, uh, but it's not quite as powerful as the AOTC. Uh, but it is still something to look into if you have qualified education expenses, and it is known as the lifetime learning credit. The lifetime learning credit. Uh, is pretty cool because it can be used beyond the first four years of higher education. Now you do have to meet uh, strict requirements just like you do with any other credit, but the great thing is that as long as you are trying to improve yourself, as long as you are seeking to uh, educate yourself, uh, you could potentially save on your taxes uh, and get some knocked off by utilizing this credit. Uh, now your school or your education, wherever you're doing it at, does need to meet some requirements such as it has to be a eligible institution and you have to be enrolled in an eligible program uh, that meets some kind of requirement, uh, whether that be a degree, a certificate, or just uh, improved skills for uh, a job. If you're past your first four years, then look into that one if you're still trying to learn. Uh, number five on our list is known as the Earned Income Tax Credit. And the Earned Income Tax Credit is probably one of the most powerful credits uh, because it is actually designed to be fully refundable um, and it can be a significant amount depending on your eligibility. Uh, the EITC is intended to help low to income moderate uh, workers and families. So it can be used anywhere from single all the way up to married and married with multiple children. And of course the credit becomes more powerful and the possible refund becomes greater. Uh, basically the lower you make and the more children you have kind of thing. Uh, so, because it's specifically designed to help people like that so they can take care of their families. And like I said, it is refundable 
uh, but there are some definitely some very strict requirements on it. Uh, the IRS uh, takes the EITC very seriously. They even have an assistant on their website, basically a little questionnaire that you can go through, input all of your information to see if you qualify for the EITC. It's probably the most misunderstood. It's probably underutilized by a lot of people who actually do qualify for it. And a lot of times it's also overutilized by people who are technically not supposed to qualify for it. Uh, so the EITC is something that uh, really gets scrutinized by the IRS uh, from what I've heard. If you are between the age of 25 and 65, you should definitely look into the EITC. Let me throw up one more chart for you so we can just look at uh, a little bit about it. Uh, and as you can see uh, on the left hand side, we have single, head of household or widowed. And then below that we have married filing jointly. So I'm going to be looking at the married filing jointly. And over there above it, you can see how many children you have. It goes from zero to three. And this is actually just talking about the qualifying income limit. So if you are married filing jointly with no children, as I am right now, uh, then I can make up to $21,370 in adjusted gross income before I am ineligible for the EITC. If I had three children, however, then I could make up to $55,952 uh, before I become ineligible. Uh, there's also one more requirement that you can see right under it that is very important. Your investment income must be less than $3,600 for the year. So if you have interest, dividends, capital gains uh, that are more than $3,600 for that tax year, then you automatically become ineligible. Because this credit was designed for uh, working families uh, as opposed to those with a high amount of assets. And then right under that, you can see the maximum credits for the 2019 year. If you had three or more children, $6,557 is a credit that you could potentially get. And that is, so that is a pretty significant amount of money. And that, remember, that is refundable. Uh, if you're married with no children as I am, then $529 is the maximum amount. And that's very highly dependent on what your income is. Uh, so obviously if you're at the top limit of those uh, income levels, then you're probably not gonna be eligible for the maximum credit. So there you have it guys. That is five tax credits that you might be eligible for uh, in 2020 when you file your taxes for the 2019 tax year. Let me know in the comments below if you think that you're gonna take any of these tax credits. And also let me know if you know of any other tax credits that might be beneficial to me or might be beneficial to anyone else that watches this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do me a huge favor and just like the video, uh, comment below. Any kind of interaction with the video really helps me out and I really do appreciate it. If you enjoy learning the information like this, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm gonna put it up on the screen right now for you. Uh, it's also right below the video, as you know. So please subscribe to the channel because I wanna put out more information and I want it to go straight to you. Thank you again so much for watching. I'm Zach from OnCashflow.com and you have a great day.